All right, hello everyone. Welcome to our class today. We have a lot of fun stuff going on. My name is Kesley Anderson and I will be your cricket coach today. Now I'm going to be working a little bit in reverse because the first thing I wanna do is say hello to everyone and just acknowledge that thank, uh, Halloween is over and we're moving into Thanksgiving, which sometimes gets overlooked because of all the fun for the holidays. So I am sort of jumping over Thanksgiving to do some holiday projects um, and help give you a jump start on holiday decorating or um, you know, gift giving purposes. So that's what we're going to do today. I have over on my um, overhead set up for the mug press. I'm going to show you how you can make your own mug. And I'm going to work in reverse. So we're going to heat it up and then I'm going to cut and everything because it takes a while to cool off and such. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my overhead camera. Let's see. All right, so here we are here. Now, the supplies I'm using for my mug is the Cricut Infusible Ink. And the Infusible Ink comes in a package like this. It's a box. And inside each box are the Infusible Ink transfer sheets, as well as a sheet of butcher paper and a little test strip if you want to test out your colors and your... Um, your moisture gel so your infusible ink sheet doesn't dry out. So what you don't finish using today, you can put back in this black bag and put back in your box to use for a later time. The infusible ink transfer sheet, you think you're getting this color because this is the color the box shows and you pull it out of the packaging and it looks like this color and you're like, wait a minute, that can't be right. Wait until you see how it changes when it heats up. So I've got my infusible ink transfer sheet and my butcher paper. Now I've already, I'm gonna slide this out of the way a little bit because I wanna pull in my mug press. I've got it heated up and I'm, let me see, I'm gonna pull it over here like this, here we go. Okay, so here is my mug press. Now I've got it turned on and it's ready to go. The handle's up so I can put my mug in there. And I went ahead and cut out a design. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna walk backwards from here, but I've cut out my design and I've positioned it on my mug. I've made it really snug and tight on that, on that mug. And I'm going to wrap it in butcher paper. Now the butcher paper is used to keep the infusible ink transfer sheet from transferring to the inside of your plates. Um, so you can just wrap your mug in the butcher paper. And if you want to, you can trim it down so that you can use it for next time. So we'll just go ahead and kind of chop this in half here. And then I'll have the extra half to use for next time. So I'm going to put this and wrap it right around my mug. And I like to kind of tuck it in the top of the mug. And you can use tape. If you want to tape it down, you can use tape. If my design were a little bit more intricate, I would definitely tape my butcher uh, paper down to hold it on place. But I'm just going to do like that. I've got it kind of folded over on the bottom and on the top. Now I just slide it in to my mug press, kind of at an angle. And then you want to make sure it all slides in together. So you sort of put the handle at a tilt towards you and you slide the mug right in there. So it's all slid in, everything, nothing's moved on me. I've got everything how it's supposed to be. And then I just close my clamp. Now these lights will beep at me. And when it gets all the way to the end, it will beep again and tell me, okay, we're done. We've got, we've got the, uh, it's all heated up and everything. And I'll take it out and set it on, I'll take it out and set it on my pad here. So I'm just gonna, while that's cooking away, I'm gonna set this aside and I'll show you the design we're gonna use. So let me share my screen here. Now, I didn't even introduce you guys to our back end help. I have Anita and Queenie here to help answer any questions. So feel free 
to, um, sorry, let me just, I've got my screen shared. Feel free to ask any questions that you have about um, Cricut using the mug press, the heat press, any of those, any of those things as we move through. Um, Cause we are gonna try and do three different projects. So I want to be able to show you everything. So I'm just gonna choose um, my winter mug. Let's see if I choose this winter mug design. And here we go. I'm gonna customize. I have, I pulled out a bunch of different options here. So you'll see I have a variety of options on my canvas. I did my first design that's heating up right now is just a series of trees. And then I'm going to show you how to do this Merry Christmas design. But let me first show you how we get the template for the mug. So if you go to images and you do 12 ounce, search for like, I'm using a 12 ounce mug. The mugs come in 12 ounces, 16 ounces, um, and the stackable mugs, which I'm not exactly sure um, the, si the size of those individual ones. But let me pull up my template here. Oh, I just had it pulled up. Let me think. What am I, um, I'm searching for the wrong thing. Um, mug template. Okay, sorry guys, let's go to the home screen and we will search for mugs. And then when you come up, you'll find a whole bunch of Cricut projects with mugs. So there is a template and I'm, I'm blanking on why it's not pulling up, but if I go to one of the mugs that I wanna make, I should be able to see the template and get my image from there. Let's see if it's on one of mine I've used. Here it is, the mug design setup. That's what you wanna look up. So here I have the mug design set up. And when you go to this um, template, you would choose which size mug you're doing. So I have the 12 ounce, I wanna do the straight edge. So I select straight edge, and then I'm going to customize it. Now from here, I can add that to my canvas and then add my images onto the design. And it'll show you exactly using the red lines here, where to place your design. So let's go find maybe some trees, some Christmas trees or something like that to put on here. I've got to find the image I used before. It was a little series of three or four trees. Let's see. This little tree set here. So you select the image that you want to use and you add that to your canvas. And then you're going to center that onto your template. So you can see here, this shows the front of your mug, the side of your mug, and the other side of your mug. And if I select everything, I can align the center pieces and that will move my design right into the center. Go align center. Now, the cool thing is when I send this to my machine, these little markup lines will not appear. All you'll have is the actual outside template and the inside template. Now, I am going to go ahead and cut my trees out of the wrap part. So I want to grab the trees and the wrap and attach those together. So I'm going to select my tree layer and my wrap layer. It's attached, so let's detach that. And I'll check, select my tree layer and my wrap layer. And I'm going to slice that design right out of the wrap. So once I design, when I send it to my machine to cut, it will actually cut, when I make it, I'm gonna have the trees show, show through my transfer tape. So now that I've got that all cut out, I'm gonna make it. Let's reattach these together. Then I'm gonna send it to my prepare screen. And on your prepare screen, you'll see it gives you the whole template to cut out. So I want to make sure I mirror my design. Whenever you're doing something hot, you wanna mirror that design. 
and I'm going to cut it on my mat. So once I hit continue, and then you just select the material that you'll be using. So I'll be using the infusible ink transfer sheet. And I just use the default pressure and my light is flashing and I'm ready to go. So let me come back over here and our, um, oh, there we go, it just beeped. So let me show you how this opens up. Let's get this back in the scene here. So now this opens up, I just pop the lid up and then I can take my handle and move it out. Now my mug itself is very, very hot. So I don't wanna touch the mug but I'm just gonna take it out by the handle and set it on my mat here off to the side. And then I'll move my mug press off to the side here. And we'll do some more mug, we'll do some cutting and then some more mugs. So this, you know, I have my infusible ink transfer sheet. I've put it on my mat and I've um, have the material with the, with the material side up and the glossy side down. So whenever you're cutting with iron-on material, whether it's iron-on vinyl or any other kind of iron-on material, you always put that shiny side down and you want to make sure you're cutting into the material itself. So that's going to go ahead and cut that design out. And I'll just take a minute. And that's actually the one I've made in the mug. I use blue. But while that's cutting, I want to show you take you uh, fast forward a bit. This is another design that I've already cut and reassembled. So I cut the green and then I cut a red um, word that I attached onto the green backing. So this has the template cut out to wrap around your mug and hold everything nice and secure. So I wanna show you how to wrap your mug then. And I just usually use a, um, a cloth to hold my mug in place. And let's see if I can get this up. I know I may have to wait for that to cut, but let's see if we can do it this way. Um, if I get my slide that up a little bit. Okay, so if I once I have my mug, I kind of don't want it to roll too much around. I want to hold it in place. And I usually will line up the top, if this is a whole decorative piece, you can line up the top or the bottom of your, um, at to use as your guide. I usually like to line up on the top and then I'll turn my mug upside down like that. So I'm just gonna take my piece here and put that, this flat part, I don't know if you can see it, but that flat part's gonna go in between the mug handle and I'm just gonna line that right up along the mug handle there. So I use this as my guide. And then I start to roll it across my mug. I'll make sure I have everything straight to start with. And then I'm just gonna bring it across. And this one's really easily cut because you can see it, it just lines up perfectly. And I'm just carrying this around. Now I have brushed my mug off with a lint roller, which you definitely wanna do, especially when you're using infusible ink, because if you get any lint between your infusible ink transfer sheet and your mug itself, then it will, um, that it'll prevent the color from transferring. So you wanna make sure there's nothing between your mug and your sheet. And I'm just, I'm pulling it really hard because I want it to be nice and firm and tight onto my mug so it doesn't go crooked. And I would spend plenty of time making sure that I get this lined up properly um, every time. So you want it, you can take it off and make sure everything's lined up and then pull it back down as you move along like this. So now that I've got it, I bring it back and I need it back at the handle. And then I'm going to use my hand and make sure that this is really pressed into the mug, that the adhesive part on the that shiny carrier sheet, it's going to hold its position on your mug. And then once you've got it to that point, you can take your butcher paper and wrap your mug in your butcher paper again. And I can use a little bit of tape here to hold that in place. 
And I'm just gonna wrap that right around like that. And then you can also hold it in place on the top of your mug and on the bottom of your mug. So if your design like this design has color all the way around that design. So I might take my butcher paper and really make sure that it's on there nice and snug and nothing's gonna move on me. And now I'm ready to do another mug. So let's bring over my mug press. Now I will say the mug press is awesome. It's unique and specific to the Cricut mugs and you have three different mugs that you can work with. But what I what I really like about it, number one is like, I'm holding it. It's It's heated up, it's hot, it's warm to the touch, but I'm holding it in my hand. So it, it like, I'm not gonna, it can sit on my countertop and I, I won't get any burns or any damage. You could see I could pull my mug out by the handle and it was no, didn't burn me or anything. It's really easy to put your mug into the machine and get a nice press every time. So I've got it positioned in there. Again, I'm just gonna let the door close. There's like a little, there's a little door here. Let's see if I can show that to you. See that little door that closes? So I just, I'm gonna hold my mug and close the door and I'm gonna push that down and it's gonna go across. So we'll set that one aside. This is still warm, but you know, I'm always anxious to uh, do the reveal. There is the blue mug. So that's the first one. Now that one, I did the same design on the green paper. Let me show that how, how to weed your infusible ink transfer sheet. And you can add names to these. You can customize it any way you want. So they're really fun, especially during the holidays. If you have family coming over for like a cookie bake or something, make everybody their own mug, or they can even make their own mug. And I love, one thing I do really appreciate about the size of the, of the um, infusible ink sheets is they, you can use them in your Cricut Joy. So if you did want to set up a little mug station at a cookie exchange party, you could definitely do that. Now to weed it, I'm just going to remove the parts that I cut out. An infusible ink transfer sheet is a little bit different because it is like a paper um, and it's got the ink on that sheet. And when the ink it heats up, it transfers the color onto the blank that you're sublimating onto. So it, um, it, it takes a high amount of heat. So if you're using this um, on a t-shirt or something like that, you can't really use a home iron because your home iron won't quite get hot enough. You really need to have that high, high heat to, um, to heat it up at the right temperature. And I just pulled off a little piece, but I can just position him back in place and tuck that back down. Now, another cautionary tale when working with infusible ink, you do wanna make sure your hands are clean. Um, so the oils and things like that don't get transfer onto your infusible ink sheet, your transfer sheet here. So I always start with clean hands. And I, if you are doing this with children or little ones, I would definitely say, you know, you wanna be the one to take it in and out of the machine. Um, because while I do say, you know, it, the machine itself, the mug press isn't hot, um, the, mug, the mugs are like, that is still hot to the touch. Okay, so there's my beautiful tree. And all I'm gonna do is grab another mug and I will use my little drawer on my mug here. So you just roll, roll, roll. Make sure there's nothing, no lint, no dog hair, anything like that on your mug. And then we're going to um, put it back, put your design onto your mug. So this time I'll show you a different technique. You can just put it upside down like that and kind of get to the center of your design and wrap it around the mug that way. And again, you just pull really hard so that it, it's really tight on your design. And you really wanna make sure that that is gonna sit onto your design. So again, you could take your, um, your tape 
and we can just tape that on to the design. And then if you want to make sure, yep, look at that. It matches up beautifully right there. I'm just going to tape a few pieces along the bottom. You can tape all the way across if that makes you feel more comfortable, that it's all going to stick. I usually find at the entry points here um, that that little bit of tape helps on that side. And then I'll put a little bit on the top here as well. And, and by entry points, I mean where they kind of meet at the edge there. And when I use tape, it does take, make it a little harder to um, get off because you have to peel that tape off and you have to be a little bit more patient and let it cool. Now, again, I'll just take my butcher paper and I'll trim that down. Where'd my scissors go? Okay, there. I'll just trim that down so that when my um, mug press finishes up on that first design, I'm ready to go on my second design. And again, I just tuck that in around the mug, just kind of wrapping it around the mug. And again, that just the butcher paper is there so that the any um, transfer ink that comes out the back doesn't go onto your um, mug press. And to be honest with you, I've never had that happen. Um, I've never removed a sheet of butcher paper and noticed that color had come through. So, but it's always good to be safe than sorry. So I'm just gonna tape that down, make sure it holds in place here. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side here. Now, while that is going, we're almost done with that first, that second one there. All right, so that's got nice, nice and securely taped onto there. This is still warm to the touch. We're gonna let that keep cooling. This one's almost done. I'm gonna give it a second. Are there any questions about the infusible ink transfer sheets before I move on to our next project? And we'll keep, oh, there we go. We'll keep working our way through the mugs as we're working in the class. So if you have questions down the line, don't, don't be shy, just go ahead and ask them. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and release the mug press. So that just releases that round piece there. And I'm going to take my mug out and set it on my sheet here. And it'll just cool off there. And then I can do that. This is the same design as this one. I have just done this one on green. And the second one I did had that Merry Christmas with the two colors of infusible ink. And the cool thing about infusible ink, one of the one of the things I really love about it is that it um it really becomes part of the mug. So you can, as long as you can put your mug in the dishwasher, uh, your infusible ink can go right into the dishwasher. You don't have to worry about it uh, fading or coming off or anything like that. It can go right into the dishwasher like like any kind of regular you know mug. Um, you will break or lose your mug before that color and the design comes off. Once it is on there, it is on there for good. So that's a really cool, that's a really cool feature, I think, of that. All right. Now, while this is, um, I'll keep letting this press go and we're gonna let these cool off. And we're gonna grab our next project. The next project is the cookie tray. So in your instructions for the class, I suggested you grab a terracotta pot and go ahead and paint it white if you want, if you so desire, and grab a white tray. Now I have a, pro and my space is getting a little crowded here. I have a project in design space. So let me share with you the project that we're gonna be making here. So let's go here and I'm, done with my winter scene. So let's go to my projects here. And any project you make, you can save in your design space. So this cocoa, cocoa, cuddles, cocoa and cookies is the design I've created for um, my cookie plate. Now I will tell you, I did change my um, snowflake because the one I had originally done had a lot to weed and I didn't want to take too much time in weeding the snowflake. So I did change it a little bit, but I went ahead and um, if you're making a cookie plate, so 
with your cookie plate, you want to create your design in design space. If you wanted to put some words around the design instead of having snowflakes in, or your phrase in the middle, you could certainly add words, let's see, to your plate. Let me find my words. So if you wanted to have like hot chocolate and cookies on your plate, you could do that as well. I'm just bringing it up in the layers panel so you can see that hot chocolate and cookies. So what I wanna show you um, on this portion of it is if you did decide to do some sort of text, you can curve your text to go on your plate. So I measured my plate and it was 13 inches by nine inches. I made two circles, one 13 inches and one nine inches. And you select both of those and then align in the center. And then to get your hot chocolate and cookies to wrap around your, the curve of your plate, you add text to your, um, to your canvas. So like, let's say I'm gonna say Cozy Vibes 2022 is going to be my text box. So I'm, but it's straight and I want it to curve. Let me choose it. Here we go. So I want it to curve around that plate. To do that, I go to the font edit bar and I select curve. And what I start with, this is my little general rule of thumb. I'll start with my curve at nine inches because that is the diameter of the inside of my plate. And I'll see where that gets me. So if I like that, I can just kind of adjust a little smidge and see if I like that curve or I can curve it. Maybe I just need to curve it a little bit more. So 8.75 is my curve. That's a little closer in or 9.5. Let's bring it out a little bit. So I'm a little bit happier with that curve. And that's how I get the curve of my words to match the curve of my plate. And then you just send that over to your machine to cut. Now I have already done the cutting because I wanted, um, I really wanted to make sure you guys could see the, um, so that you could see how to assemble it all together. So um, I've seen camping mugs that be, can be sublimated. You know, Joan, Joan's asking, I've seen camping mugs that can be sublimated. Do you know after you add the design, whether it's safe to heat liquids in the cup over a campfire? I think that would depend on your mug, the type of mug you were using. If it was safe to heat it over a campfire before it's sublimated, I would assume my answer then would be yes, if it's safe to do that. But I think that would depend on the mug. So on our cookie plate, I've got my cuddles and cocoa and cookies for the inside. And I made these little snowflakes. Now I have um, a two inch clearance between the inner part of my plate and the outer edge of my plate. So what I've done is I've made my snowflakes 1.75 inches to fill in that space. Oh, there we go. Another Kesley, mug is done. Kesley, on your yeah. plate, it looks like it is ceramic. Is that a correct? It is not a ceramic plate. It is um, it is a Michael's charger plate. It was like, what are these, like $1.99 or something? So they're plastic? It's a plastic plate, yes. Awesome. You could absolutely use a ceramic plate if you wanted to. I just chose plastic. Um, and the other thing is, I'm, I chose, I don't know why I chose plastic, but you could use ceramic. And I wanted to use, um, I use removable vinyl because um, I might wanna keep, once I get this plate assembled and put on with my terracotta and make a cake, like a little cake stand, I may wanna later convert this into a birthday cake stand or a different holiday or a different season. So I selected to use removable matte um, vinyl instead of a permanent vinyl so that after the holidays, 
I could remove my snowflakes, they peel off a little bit easier than if I had used permanent. And then I can, um, I can put those on, then I can change it out and do something different. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off our mug press here and set this aside. So not to burn anything. Now I do have my room vented. I have a window open for my mug press. Um, so I didn't want to, you know, have anything too, too hot out there. Okay, so my plate is 13 inches, which your machine wouldn't let you cut a 13 by 13 inch square to get that design. So what I did was I cut a circle that's nine inches, which is the center of my plate. And I have um, snowflakes to go all the way around. So what I'm gonna do is take my circle and just create even distance around the edge of my plate. So I'm gonna take my circle and I'm just gonna fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And then I'll fold it. Um, I'm actually gonna fold it in half like this. I think that's right. And then fold it in half like this. But my snowflakes are actually going to fit in the middle of these two designs here. So you'd have to go again and fold it like this because my snowflakes are going to fit. I'll have one snowflake here, one snowflake here, one snowflake here. It's not quite in the middle there, is it? I've got a shadow here. Let's see if I've got that better. So that's the middle there. Let me put one here, one here, one here, and one here. Okay, let me mark that with a pen so you guys can see that. So I'll put, I'll start here and put one snowflake here and then moving my way around, I'll have a second, a third, and then I'm back to one. Okay, so when you're using um, premium, uh, the premium temporary vinyl, removable vinyl, you can pick it up and remove it later on. So um, I just need to use my standard grip transfer tape. If you're doing the permanent vinyl, you would still just use standard grip transfer tape. But if you want to get fancy and use the glitter vinyl, then you would need to match that with the strong grip transfer tape. And that's because the texture on the strong grip um, transfer tape picks up your glitter pieces better than just um, using a regular um, regular transfer tape. You really need that stronger grip to grasp that tape. Okay, so I'm cutting my transfer tape down into a little square so I can just start with my first snowflake. So I'm just gonna grab that first snowflake off of my backing here, my carrier sheet. And I'm just gonna push that down and then you're gonna grab that off. And I'm just, you would do this one at a time. So you could work your way around your plate one at a time. So we're gonna pick, this as the top of our plate. And I'm gonna use my guide and put my first snowflake down like that. And then I have another transfer tape here that I can use. And we'll just pick that. Now I would, I'll reuse my transfer tape. So your transfer tape is reusable for as many times as it has stick. So you know it's done when you put it on something and it doesn't, it doesn't stick anymore. Then you're like, okay, time for a new piece of transfer tape. But as long as it's got stick on it, you can absolutely use it. So we're just gonna grab that and turn it upside down and pull this off like this. Okay, so there's my first one and then my second one will go right here. And you can, you know, obviously you don't have to do it exactly as I've done it. You can do it however you wanna do it, but we're just gonna keep working our way around the plate, adding your vinyl on as you go. So let's see, I need another one with the little dots and then another, the other one. So we're just gonna grab that 
the little dot one. And then this one, is anybody making, what kind of cookies does everybody like to make for the holiday season? What's your family's favorite? I think my family loves, we have a ginger cookie we make that my dad makes us. And then um, snickerdoodles is always a fan favorite. Those go the fastest. And the cookies with the little Hershey kisses in the center. I guess those are like sugar cookies with the little kiss in the center. I'm just gonna keep adding my little decorations here as I go around. Okay, so you just keep adding around here as you go. Now I'm not gonna keep continue to add the snowflakes just in case we run out of time. I wanna make sure we get to every, every little bit of the other parts that we're working on. So if we have time, I'll come back and keep working on those and we'll get those on. But now I've got my big design for the center of my plate. And again, I just take, since I'm using um, removable vinyl, I'm going to use a regular transfer tape and I put that on the top. Now, when you're working with something a little bit bigger, <laughs> it can stick down pretty easily. So what I like to do is give myself a little help. So I'll stick just about a quarter, a half an inch on the top line there on my mat, and then I'll pull up my transfer tape and slide my design underneath that and then pull it down. Now, when I put my transfer tape on, I try and make sure I have as many bubbles removed from my design as possible. So that helps eliminate the bubble that might transfer to my sheet, I mean, to my plate when I move it. And then I'm just turning it over and we're just removing the vinyl backing off of our sheet here. And I just, whenever I get to a spot that wants to kind of come up and I don't want it to, I just fold over my backing paper, my carrier sheet. <laughs> Sorry for all the wrinkling, but I'll just pull that off and kind of just let it go like this. Just kind of keep pulling that off until it all comes off. And then I bring over my sheet again, my plate, I keep calling it a sheet. But I'm gonna bring over my plate and I'll take my design and put it down in the middle. Now you could do your design in the middle first and then do your uh, snowflake so you get that lined up. And now I, what I like to do is hold it up like a taco. So I hold the two sides up and I put that down and then I let it fold down as I go. And you just kind of want to make sure that you push it down into the plate. And then you just walk your transfer tape off and then you can use your transfer tape again to keep working on your snowflakes. All right, how cute is that? I'm ready. I'm ready for some cookies and cocoa. How fun is that? And then again, just keep working with your snowflakes. Now for my terracotta piece, I will put it upside down. So the fatter side, the wider side of the terracotta is on the bottom. And then we're going to glue that onto the top like that. But before I do that, I do wanna add a little decoration um, onto my bottom. Now I could add some snowflakes if I wanted to, but have you seen this mosaic material? It's, um, it is, I'm looking for my paper trimmer now. It's, um, it is so fun to work with. So I'm gonna grab this little red one, this little red color here. And it's, a, this material comes as an iron-on as well as your vinyl. And all you have to do, I'm gonna just trim this down into a one and a half inch piece. And I've already measured it. So it, it is a one and a half inch piece and I need a little bit more than one 12 inches. So I'm actually gonna need to cut two. Now, the difference in this type of material than say your regular vinyl is this type of material has a carrier sheet on it. So you have your backing, all the dots and then the carrier sheet. And what that does is that top carrier sheet keeps all those dots together. So I, I'm just gonna reverse weed it and I'll take the backing sheet off first and leave 
the um, carrier sheet on to hold all those little mosaic pieces together. So see, I just am gonna take that backing piece off and then I can wrap it around my terracotta. Now, I'm gonna do it the same way I do my mugs. I'll start kind of in the middle here and begin to wrap it and press it based on the bottom. I'm gonna wrap it and press it. When I say based on the bottom, I mean the top of the design here. I'm just gonna work it around like that. And I do let it go up to the top a little bit. If it, if it goes over the top, that's okay, because I can just take an X-Acto knife and trim that off if I need to. Just can take it on and off until you get nice and flat. I hope it'll it'll come off on this my paint. But if not, I might even just leave that little plastic piece on it so shiny. But see how it's coming off a little bit up there? I could either come back and keep working that angle down. Just working that down and working out any air bubbles. And then I'm going to add a little piece right here onto my design. I'll just grab a little extra piece. And then if you want to, you can even top it off with a little um, with a little ribbon. Now that I always get the tricky part is always peeling off the carrier sheet and leaving the dots there. I may have bitten off more than I can chew today. Or do I have the wrong? Do I have iron on on this? I do have, this material does come in um, an iron on as well as the, um, as well as the vinyl. I may have the wrong material here, which if that's the case, then I'm definitely gonna leave my little shiny piece on. But if it's, you could even use your mini press. And if I did mistakenly use the um, iron on the wrong way, Anita, do you have any tips in customer service for using this material? So with the iron-on, um, the backing would not be sticky at all. So okay. if it's sticky, then it is the vinyl. Yay. All right. Um, as thing. far as getting it to stick to the, the spray paint, uh -huh. I honestly don't know. A lot would depend on if the spray paint has any sort of a... Um, finish to it finish to it that would have any sort of a grease okay because I've used it before and it usually peels off so nicely yeah and it looks like the the backing is sticky yeah it is sticky so it's definitely not the iron-on so but you could use the iron-on if you wanted to right on this All right, I'm just going to leave it like that and I'll fet, I'll fuss with it in a bit but I'm just gonna leave it like that because the last step, see how cute that is? And then the last step is I'm going to use my E6000 glue. If I have, there's some reason to go, this E6000 glue. You could use your hot glue gun if you wanted to as well um, to glue this down. If you didn't have E6000 glue or if you couldn't get it open. <laughs> Let's see. I may need to, here we go. So I just am going to grab my glue. This stuff works on everything. It's the best. I need to clean up my tip there, I guess. And you're just going to slide that right on the bottom there. And I'll step back with my front camera so you can see how this all looks put together. Now, what I like to do here is I will turn my plate upside down and put my so that my design goes in the middle of the plate instead of trying to put the plate onto the mug. I mean, onto the terracotta piece, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm just gonna do that. And then we're just gonna turn upside down and get it right in the center and line it all up. And then I'm gonna let this dry. So there we go. And I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna set this aside here behind me and let that dry. So it'll be all nice and dry at the end of class. Now, before I go on to our last thing, let's come back to our mugs and see how our mug press did. 
So this is the double layer Merry Christmas, two colors. I love to use the two colors when I do um, the mugs, they're so pretty. And you just, I'm just gonna peel off my, my transfer here, my carrier sheet, and look at that color. How fun is that? And it's just, you know, it's, it's one with the mug that ink has just transferred right over into your mug. So there is a Merry Christmas mug. I've got the trees and I have one more here. Not too hot. I think we can peel this one off too. Now this was the Christmas trees that I did are the outdoor wintry trees. You have to keep them at Christmas. I'm excited. One of the things my parents did when we were kids is, and I've carried this tradition on with my kids, is I have a treat outside their door. Look at how beautiful is that. I have a treat outside their door so we can sleep in a little bit. And um, this would be perfect to have a little warm tea, if your kids are old enough, to have a little warm tea kettle and some, um, and some hot cocoa out there for them. I, I kind of like the green. I, I should have done a, um, a red mug to go. So a red, a green, but I love the blue too. That's really pretty. So Kesley? Yes. On the carry, on the um, backing sheet that you yeah. removed from the mosaic, did it have a grid on it? It did say um, permanent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because that that is also the way to tell the difference. Oh, yeah. On the iron on, it is blank and it does not have the grid. Right. And I'm thinking I might should have used the iron on because it doesn't seem like the permanent wants to come off for me. Yeah. But that happens sometimes. Yes, depending <laughs> on what you use. <laughs> I'll update the project and as as a final result. <laughs> Okay, so now we have one more project to heat up because if you're getting um, if you're getting into cozy season, the coolest thing is to have a nice cozy blanket. Polly, good question. Can you use the small Cricut iron press if you don't have the mug press? So yes and no. The small Cricut press does get hot enough to do the transfer sheet but it doesn't, you'd have to like really move it around the mug and I'd worry maybe you didn't have it on there long enough. Um, so, and your design would have to be small. So I don't think you could get like, you couldn't do this full color with the easy press. You could do like a little bit of it with the easy press, but to get this full color and consistent, it would be really difficult to do. So um, the mug press is the way to go with the mugs. Okay, now, okay, one, one last project to show you guys for your cozy vibes, and that is a blanket. So a couple years ago, my kids, I got, I got a blanket for myself, and my kid stole it. So I had to remake my own blanket, and I made this blanket, and it just says, Mommy Established 1999, because that's what my kids call me. But it was the same type of blanket. It's just like a fleece um, blanket. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now I did mine um, as mommy, because that's what my kids call me. But I also want to show you how the, it's so fun kind of to, if you have somebody in your house who's always cold and um, to do something kind of in that, in that streak of being like eternally cold. So what we're going to do on this one, I'll share my screen again and I'll give myself a new project. Now, all these projects are in my design space. So if you follow my um, profile, you can access all these projects or you can do a search for them. When the video is sent out, you will get a, um, the links will be underneath the, the video. So let's see, there was a cute freezing design, but any of the, it is the season to be freezing. I mean, that is super cute. Um, Let's see if I type in freezing. I think it said always freezing was the design. Here it is. Always freezing, literally freezing. So our artists in design space really come up with some very fun, um, trendy, trendy, 
trendy things to do. So you can measure your blanket and decide how, how wide you wanna make it. Um, I kind of am gonna make it as wide as my heat press will press in one press. So let's just give a quick measure on that. I think it's 12 inches. Oh, it's, it's about 14 inches. I probably think I'm gonna cut it about 12 inches um, long. Now I could, I could do it in two presses, but I also don't want it to take over the whole design. Now I am gonna use Cricut Smart Iron-On that is a white glitter. And I'll tell you why I'm gonna do that. Um, let's see, we're gonna, it's all attached together. Nope. Let's make sure it's all attached together. We want that to cut all together and then click make it. And I'll be cutting this um, without a mat. Let's see, confirm. Can I turn it this way? So we can get it to go across the design. It may be too big. Oh, cause I have everything attached to it. Okay, let me go back. I didn't have everything attached when I attached it, <laughs> when I sized it. So I just am gonna resize it to, well, I'll keep it at 12 inches. That's actually a good size. Okay, sorry. And then I'm gonna cut it without the mat because I'm using Cricut Smart Material on my Cricut uh, Maker 3. So I can cut it without using a mat. And then um, I wanted to re mirror the design because it is going to be an iron-on material. So to do that, um, I'm just gonna click the edit screen and I will mirror that image like that. So it'll mirror that image right there. And I'll be using smart iron-on, but my smart iron-on is glitter smart iron-on. So let me browse my materials and I'm just gonna say, um, I'm using smart iron-on glitter which is so much fun. So I'll tell you why I'm gonna do that um, material. Okay, I'm, I'm beeping over there. So let's go over to that, my overhead camera, and I'll show you that. So um, I'm using the glitter iron-on material on this blanket because um, we all like to hold fuzzy things in our hands and, and um, I'm learning, you know, we're all learning about the, fidget spinners. I know those were really popular a couple of years ago. Um, so anyway, so the, the glitter has a bit of a texture to it. So when I use this on iron-on, I thought it would be fun to have on a blanket because then you could kind of rub your hand on the glitter and feel the texture. Oh, this isn't the glitter, but this is just white. Let me grab some glitter iron-on. I think I have some behind me. Here we go. This is going to be a silver, which is still going to be really pretty. I think this is silver instead of white. Yeah, this is silver. So we'll just put silver instead of the white. It's no big deal. So I'm going to put that in. Now you notice I'm just putting this in without using a mat. Um, and it's because it's smart material, so I don't have to use a mat. Um, I can just load it right in. I've got the material side up and that shiny side down. That's the carrier sheet. And I've mirrored my image. So it's going to do the reverse of my image. It'll cut the reverse of my image. And I'm going to show you how easy this is to weed. So while this is cutting, um, while this is cutting, I'm going to show you I'm gonna show you the, I'm gonna share um, with you how I get my, um, let's see if I have my phone handy. I have my phone handy. Um, I just go online to the Cricut Heat Guide and I'll pull that up for you all so you can see what that looks like and how to, how to use the Heat Guide. It's making lots of noise over there. Let's go share my screen again. And I'm gonna share my heat guide here. So I'll be using my auto press to heat with, and I'll be using smart glitter iron-on. And then my base material is um, the cotton poly blend. It's just a really yummy blanket and I'll be using the Cricut pressing mat. Now, when I say apply, it tells me to set my temperature to 330 degrees and press for 30 seconds preheat for five seconds. So I'm gonna stop sharing that so you can see how I do that.
So on your on the auto press machine, it has this um Okay, right, we're all cut out there. Let's see. So on the auto press, you have your um, machine here, your dial. So I can just dial it up to 330 degrees. And then I'm going to, when I actually press it, it'll press for 30 seconds. So I'm just going to leave it like that and it'll heat up for me. You don't have to put it down to heat it up. You can. But that's when you, you press it down. Actually, I don't think you can heat it up down. So it'll stay up like this. Now I can put my hand under it. Again, all those safety features with the mug press are in place with the auto press. If you don't have an auto press, you can use your easy press. You could use your mini press. You could even use a home iron. If you're going to use a home iron, I do recommend that you, um, it'll lag for just a second. If you use a home iron, I do recommend that you, um, make sure you have no heat on, uh, no heat, no steam. So no moisture coming out of your iron and you put it on the highest setting possible. Um, you can certainly use your home iron to press this down. The auto press though makes it a dream. So I'm just gonna trim down my paper here and I'm gonna show you how easy this, Iron on material is to weed. And so Kesley, you, can you can you give out your Facebook and Instagram information? I believe oh, you said it was Kes, Kesley365. Yes, it's Kesley.365 on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And if you go into design space, I'll show you how to find my profile in design space so you can um you can see all the projects that I've made and added in there. Like I saw somebody asking about the Let It Snow shirt, and that one is in the uh, is a project. And you can use all these same techniques. It actually it actually uses this silver um, iron-on material to do the um, the silver to do the snowflakes. So now with this one, it's a little bit different because you're weeding out the inside piece. Um, you're, you're doing like a reverse weeding. And if you saved it, you could save these pieces and use these um, for another project. Always freezing. I'm trying to find my lines here. Make sure I don't pull something out that I'm not supposed to. I do that sometimes. I get so excited to see how it's going to turn out that I'll get to pulling weeding too much. So you do want to follow the cut lines on your project. So this will tear as you go, as you, as you can see, I'm tearing as I go along. I'm being really careful that I'm not getting into the wrong thing. But I will say that your um, iron-on material, especially this glitter, is very forgiving. So you could always push it back down if you did accidentally tear something up that you wanted to keep. So there's my freezing. And now I'm gonna remove the always. So it's it's a good and a bad, Anita, of having a, a different name um, because Kesley's a pretty unique name, but it's people at, tend to spell it wrong. It's K-E-S-L-E-Y and not the other way. And I, at Cricket, we have a, uh person who works in member uh oh your microphone went out when um at cricket we have someone whose name is Kel kelsey <laughs> and so i'm always going did i say that right <laughs> which name is it <laughs> yeah exactly all right always freezing so i weeded that design out and you can see i did accidentally cut off the top there um, I could kind of go back and find that piece, maybe. Maybe it was just a little bit. I mean, I have put it in right that, but the, I'm not worried about that. That little tiny piece there is not going to affect the outcome of my design. So let's go back over here. I'll share my um, main camera here. Oops. Oops. My fingers are wiggly today. Okay, here we go. All right, 
So I've got my easy press, my auto press is heating up. I'm gonna take my blanket and find my corner for my blanket. I've got this beautiful blue, such a rich color. And I've got the tag here. So I'm gonna keep the tag um, and put it on the side of the tag. This is called a Holloway, it's the brand of blanket. And I'm gonna put this in and heat it up for five seconds on the bottom here. I'll just give it a nice fold, about like that. So we put it in there and then I'll heat it up for about five seconds to get it. That takes any moisture out of my blanket. So if there's any moisture in my blanket or anything like that, it'll take that moisture out and it's ready to go. Now I can, I'm just gonna kind of fold it in half. When I position these on a blanket, I kind of fold it in half. So I have the idea of where the, that fold line is gonna be. And then I'm gonna press it just another five seconds here. So I make sure I know where that angle, where the line is on my blanket. The blanket is made of, I, I should look at the, the uh, let's see, this one here is, the brand is Independent Trading Company. Um, it, I, it's an 82% cotton, 42% polyester. So it washes, oops, I left that in too long. It washes up really nicely. Um, this one is by a brand named Holloway. And um, I, you can put, you can honestly put um, iron on material on almost any type of blanket. Like I have a, a blanket that's like fuzzy. So this is nice because it's got a, it's a fleece type of blanket, but um, I have a blanket that's fuzzy and I can put it on there. Okay, so I'm gonna take my always freezing. I fold it in half to find kind of where my center is of my design. This is unlike a t-shirt. You don't have to be super worried about getting it on the center. Now I'm gonna face it down towards the corner. All right, so I've got that on there and I just put it on and then I've got my timer set for 30 seconds. And I'm gonna put that on and following the heat guide, the online heat guide to do it. But you can, if you, do, if anybody does those blankets that you knot the sides up with, you could do this on that type of material, any type of blanket you can put it on. I wouldn't put it on grandma's favorite quilt or anything like that. Let's check, let's check our ease. Oh, it's dry. Now watch this. So now I have this adorable little cookie tray that will sit on a table. If you wanted to, you could paint the underside white um, or put some vinyl decoration on that. I'm just gonna flip this over for 10 seconds and heat up the backside. Look how pretty. So let's just flip this over and heat up the backside here. You can customize these with people's names. Um, so if everybody in your family needs to have their own blanket, you can certainly customize it with their name and put, put a blanket on there. Now, the cool thing about the auto press, I will say is it, it um, pushes down. So it puts just the right amount of pressure that you need for your design. Okay, now while that is cooling, I'm just gonna close this up. It does have an auto on off switch to it. So, um, so you don't have to worry about leaving it on. If you, if you walk away and go, oh no, did I turn it off? You don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna let that cool off for one second. It's a cool peel. So I'm gonna let that cool. And while that's cooling, I will show you how you can find my um, design space. You, how you can find my profile in design space. So let me just say done and I'll save this project. So to save a project, I just hit save and then I type in the project, um, always freezing blanket. So I'll save that project. And then if I ever wanna go back to any of my projects, I can just go into my projects and find my projects. If you'd like to find my profile, if you, when you go into design space, go to the home screen, and you can type in my name, K-E-S-L-E-Y Anderson, and um, my profile will show up as well as projects I've shared on Design Space. 
and put in the community. And then my personal profile, my community member profile shows up right here and you click on that. And then right under my profile picture will be an option to, um, to follow me. And so then you can just click that follow right there and follow me. And then let me show you this project. So I go back to all of my projects um, and my always freezing blanket will pop up. So here's my always freezing blanket. I don't know why it's saved twice, but I'm going to um, share my project. I'll share this one and make it public. So now that's out there for everybody to see, as well as our cocoa plate. Make that one public. So you can always look up cook cookie plate and then our Mary, our winter mugs. And then that looks really jumbled up. So I'll get that one cleaned up for you all. And then you can, um, when the video comes out, you will have um, the links to all those projects in the video. So you can just click on those links and it'll take you into design space. Okay, are we ready? Let's take this over to the overhead camera one more time. And then I think we're almost done with class. So when I'm ready, I'm ready for those Hallmark movies to start. I think that happens pretty soon, doesn't it? Now, when I remove um, this, you'll notice, see all this glitter on the side? Don't worry about that because that doesn't have any of the iron on material to transfer it. So if your, trans your backing tape has a little bit of glitter on it, that doesn't hurt it at all. Now, if I wanted to, I may go back and cut that little corner piece out and, and put that back on my blanket. I probably will because I'm a dork like that, but I'll be able to put that heat this right back up and apply that little piece onto there. And you won't even, because the glitter material, you won't even be able to tell that there was a cut there or that's a separate piece. Now, if any of this hadn't, um, if, if it hadn't adhered down, I would just go back and give it another 10 second press and then and have it apply down like that. So sometimes I've noticed um, in my some of my older shirts, before I, I used the easy press and really understood how to push hard on it, um, the material the material will would come off. So I've gone back now with my easy press and repress it and it sticks. So if it ever comes off through washes or anything like that, just put it back under the heat and you'll be good to go. And I'm gonna turn this around so we can get a good look at this face up. Here we are. Always freezing. That is perfect for my house. So I can have that for somebody with a little mug and their cookies. Have fun. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Um, Maria, th Oops. Maria, thank you for letting me go over a couple minutes. I appreciate it. I can't wait to see what you guys do. If you have questions after the class, you can always reach out to me. And don't forget that when this video, Michael's posted up on YouTube, it will have the links for the projects. So thank you guys very much. Have a great afternoon.